Good morning. Good morning. Good to be with you today and glad that you're all here as we gather this morning for worship and want to expend, extend a welcome also to those who are tuning into us online. We're glad you're worshiping with us as well. Just a couple of announcements for the mission and ministry of our congregation. A reminder that tickets are available still uh, between the worship services for the all-daughter brunch that's coming up this next Saturday. So um, that's Saturday, May 4th. So I invite you to be a part of that. Again, tickets will be on sale between the worship services. Also, you'll see the note in the bulletin about marking your calendars because we're going to be hosting another rummage sale here. Some of the details about that, I'm not going to read through the whole list. Some of the details for that are listed in the bulletin. If you have some questions about that, why you can reach out to Becky Popio. Um, but I uh, want to draw your attention to that as well. Also, we continue to collect the items that we are uh, collecting for Lake Local Schools as the kids get ready to, uh, to start their summer break. There's a, a, a sample of all the items that we're looking to collect back on the Welcome Center counter. I invite you to take a look at that, bring those items in, and um, we will certainly get those delivered to the school. I had mentioned to the congregation um, early in April, it might have been the first Sunday of April, about the uh, passing of Nancy Hughes. And um, Nancy, there's going to be a memorial service on Wednesday, May 1st, at Uniontown United Methodist Church at 6 p.m. with calling hours then one hour prior to the service. I would invite you now to please stand as you are able and we will continue with our confession and forgiveness. <clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ, and by his authority, I therefore declare unto you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>
Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. you. Let us pray. O oh God, you give your sons as the vine apart from whom we cannot live. Nourish our life in his resurrection that we may bear the fruit of love and know the fullness of your joy through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from Acts chapter 8. An angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning home, seated in his chariot. He was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, Go over this chariot and join him. So Philip ran up to it, heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you are reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the spirit that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to slaughter. And like a lamb silent before its shear, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, About whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? Then Philip began to speak, and starting with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look! Here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop. And both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water. And Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away 
The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself as a as Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. The word of the Lord. Gospel according to St. John, the 15th chapter. Jesus said, I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me, and my words abide in you. Ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O God, you who are our strength and our Redeemer, through our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It's amazing to me how valuable vines can be. Do you know that this past year that American drank, Americans drank 935 million gallons of its fruit? That's, that's a lot of wine, right? And that number increases, I think, just about every year. And, and looking at statistics, I, I noticed that, that today there are over 11,000 wineries in, in the United States alone. And, um, you know, the, whatever type of wine that you want, it's, it's probably out there. Wineries and, and vineyards are the second most popular tourist attraction in California, second to Disneyland. The United States is the largest retail wine market in the world, and according to recent reports, at least studies show that, that wineries employ about 35,000 people, or, or more than 35,000 people. And as important of an economical value um, this vine is, as important as it is, Jesus gave it a spiritual value more than any other plant that God ever created. You know, I think more often than not, when, when we hear this text and, and think about the text, we, we first think, I think about the judgment that at least sounds like there's there in that. More often than not, the meaning uh, is, is 15, um, the sixth verse, one of those strange readings, whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered and thrown into the fire. You don't abide in me. Well then, you're cut off and discarded. And if that weren't enough, let's be sure to throw you into the furnaces or the fire of hell just to make sure, right? And isn't that what we hear? But when I read that, this passage, I hear something different. I think it's actually a promise for us, a promise. I don't read it as a threat. And why? Because it all has to do with context. And maybe you recall that this 15th verse comes at a time when Jesus is pre preparing the disciples for his death. It comes during his Passover, on the eve of his crucifixion. He knows what's going to happen. His flock certainly has no idea. 
He's trying to prepare them. They don't understand. They didn't. And you see, this is a really important idea for, for Jesus in this context. He says, I'm the vine. You're the branches. Stay connected to me. I'm the one that will transport the things that you need in order for you to, to do and to hear the things that God has for you to do so that you'll bear fruit. He's trying to teach the disciples something that they really need to stay connected to him. Because if they disconnect, they're going to find that you lose the source of your spiritual strength, the capacity to bear any fruit. And it's easy to understand, isn't it? If we take the branch from the vine, it won't bear much fruit. And so Jesus is saying, stay with me, talk to me, stay connected, be in relationship. And that's how you're going to be able to find the strength that God um, asks you to have. You're going to find strength if you bear this fruit and don't disconnect me from me. And in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, Jesus speaks primarily about being a follower. But in the Gospel of John, in the Gospel of John, it's all about relationship. And Jesus then makes it very clear, abide in me as I abide in you. Just as a branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. So, I brought a branch in today, and, and I got to wondering, you know, because um, do you think that if we all got together and really, just really tried, maybe together um, with the entire gathered congregation here, do you think we could make this thing bear some grapes? Maybe if I took some duct tape and taped them to them, right, taped it to them, right, it was, it, we would be able to do that. And you know what? It's probably not going to happen. It's probably not going to happen. In fact, you and I know that, that it won't. But isn't that what we do sometimes? We work so hard. We work so hard, but man, this branch, it's got no chance. No matter how hard you try, it's never going to bear fruit. And nothing is going to happen, Jesus says. That's how ridiculous, Jesus, I think, says, when you're not connected to me. You're just not working. Maybe you're just laboring in vain. I don't know about you, but one of the things I often try to is, is we're going to talk to all these other people who maybe seem to be bearing fruit, and we can, we can learn from them all the different strategies that, that, that they have learned. But Jesus says, if you're not connected to me, it's not going to work. You're not going to have any fruit that lasts. No fruit is going to happen. So everything depends on this. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit. Because apart from me, you can do nothing. It seems to me that Jesus is giving us the promise of a guarantee. If you abide in me, you're going to bear fruit. I don't know about you, but look, I struggle with this. I see people doing amazing things, and, and maybe I think I did it wrong. 
Or maybe I should have done it like him or, or in the way the, that they have accomplished things. Or maybe I should do it like her, the way in which she has accomplished things. And we try to follow all these other patterns instead of going back to Jesus and following him. You promised, Jesus, if, if I just abide in you, you will abide in me. I'm guaranteed of that. I'm guaranteed to bear fruit. Are you abiding in Jesus today? I think one of the other struggles that I have is, is how do you have a, a relationship with the Lord who you cannot see? I don't think it's so difficult from the relationship that you have with other people, right? My oldest daughter, Brooke, lives in, in uh, Brooklyn, New York, and we don't get to see her face-to-face -face very often, but almost every Sunday night, we FaceTime with, uh, Rhonda and I FaceTime with her. At least once a week, we connect. And then I wonder throughout the week how I can maybe bless her and pray for her. We listen to one another. And that's how we do it with Jesus. We can talk to him and we can listen to him. And if we're branches, we're meant to bear fruit. That's how this divine dresser looks at each and every one of us. Jesus looks to see the kind of fruit that we're bearing. You know, in some churches, the level of spiritual maturity is, is in how much of the Bible you have memorized. In some churches, is, it's how, how closely you stay connected to the orthodox teaching of the, of the church and, and its doctrine. In some churches, it's, well, how many mission trips have you been on and how many can you take? And Jesus says spiritual maturity comes down to just one thing. He says it comes down to love. Love. Meant to be the rhythm of our lives. It's not a feeling, it's a decision in acting and seeking to do the things that blesses the other person, that builds them up in a new way, and helps them stem love. And you know what I think is so interesting? People like that, such people, change you, but you know what's even more significant? They change the world. Several years ago, there's um, a person by the name of Wesley Autry, Maybe some of you had heard the story about Wesley. He was, his name uh, through the media, he was titled the Subway Samaritan. He's a construction worker and uh, was in the New York City subway a few years ago. And he gained recognition by saving a young 20-year-old film, um, film student. This person had suffered a seizure and fell on the tracks of the subway. And this gentleman, Autry, told the, U the uh, New York Times that he didn't feel like he did anything because, and did, any, did something that anybody would do. He got down onto the tracks and lit this young man off the tracks before the subway train came and ran him over. downplayed this and said, I don't think I did anything spectacular. He says, I just saw someone who needed help and I think I did the right thing. I don't know if I would have the courage to do that. And hopefully most of us will never have to. And maybe it could be so much easier for the rest of us because I think here's what you can do to demonstrate God's love. What about loving your spouse or significant other when you're irritated with them? You know? 
how difficult is it for you to be nice to those individuals when they're not nice to you? Isn't that a challenge? Can you care about your neighbor and look for ways to bless them even when they haven't blessed your life? Can you take a mission trip for a vacation to serve other people? I think that too could be what it looks like to bear much fruit and to love one another. And if you're wondering, well, how do I know if I'm growing? I think St. Paul says it best about the way in which we bear fruit. He suggests that there's a test. Growth in the fruit of the Spirit and the harvest. The fruit of the Spirit are love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And couldn't we use a little bit more of that in our daily lives and certainly in the world? Is your life usually characterized by blessing other people and loving them and putting them first? I think our greatest happiness comes when we're able to figure that out for ourselves. Open ourselves to the Holy Spirit. Pay attention. Jesus tells us to stay connected. That was the urgent message that Jesus shared with his disciples the night before he died. Abide in me as I abide in you. Abide. Dwell. Make your home in me. Make your home in me as I make my home in you. And Jesus guarantees us that promise. Amen. confess our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing that Jesus is risen and love has triumphed over fear, let us pray for the church the world, and all those in need of good news. 
We pray for the church around the world, for all ministers and for the mission of the gospel. Keep all the newly baptized and confirmed in your care. Cleanse our hearts with your word and help us to abide in you always. God of grace. For the well-being of the earth and of all created things. For rivers and lakes, streams and estuaries, melding glaciers and polluted waters. Renew the face of the earth and shower us with goodness. God of grace. For the nations and all those in authority, for local, state, and national leaders, for elected representatives at every level, and for international organizations, that justice and peace may reign, God of grace. For all those in need, for any experiencing homelessness or unemployment, for those fleeing from oppression or seeking asylum, and for all who are ill or suffering. This morning we pray especially for Brenda Montgomery, Shannon Bridges, Clyde McGee, Phyllis Novi, the family of Nancy Hughes, the family of Pastor Scott Bacon, Tom Souders, Scott, Amy, Ron, Rob, Cindy, Damon, Lori, and all those whose needs are known to us, and for those whom we name before you in our hearts. God of grace. For this congregation, for the caring ministries of this faith community, and for all who visit and minister to one another, for all who take communion to homes or care centers, and for all who seek to share your love with the world, God of grace. With thanksgiving for the saints who rested from their labors, help us like them to bear much fruit and to become your disciples. And at the last, bring us to the heavenly banquet where all will feast together at your table, God of grace. Into your hands, most merciful God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your abiding love through Jesus Christ, our resurrected and living Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior Jesus Christ the true Passover lamb who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels, archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks 
broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of their sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> 